Hello, I'm Eric Gilson, a principal research physicist at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. It's my pleasure to speak with you today about improved separation using a low turbulence centrifuge. Our patented technology is 10 times better than a traditional centrifuge, 10 times. And with that comes time. You can use that time to make more product, make a better product, or maybe a little bit of both. But what I think is the most interesting thing to do is use our technology to develop existing markets for submicron sized or nanomaterials, and even open new markets for these types of materials. This is really the centrifuge frontier. Liquid centrifuges separate solids that are in the liquid. Maybe you're interested in drinking water. Maybe you're panning for gold. Maybe you're trying to clean out plastics that were floating in the water. It doesn't matter whether you're panning for gold or trying to get rid of dirt. One person's trash is another treasure to be sure, but centrifuges separate them out all the same. Let's talk for a minute about how a centrifuge works. They create a centrifugal force, which creates an effective gravity so that down now means something different. If you go on a centrifuge type ride at a carnival, you might see people who look like they're standing up, but to them, they feel like they're laying down because for them, down is now radially outwards as shown by these yellow arrows. The same thing was true in 2001, A Space Odyssey, where Dave Bowman goes for a jog in his rotating spaceship. For him, the artificial gravity pointed to the left in this picture. For him, that's down. If he had a helium balloon and he let go of it, it would float up for him, which in this picture would be to the right. And you can do this in your own car. Grab a helium balloon, make a sharp right turn. You'll feel thrown to the driver's side. That's becoming down for you. The balloon, on the other hand, will want to float up or towards the passenger side. Our focus here is on the commercial use of liquid centrifuges. I'm not talking today about ultra centrifuges used for medical applications. I'm not talking about gas centrifuges used for things like uranium enrichment. I'm talking about these types of liquid centrifuges like this decanter centrifuge shown at the top with the large auger inside to help separate solids out. I'm talking about centrifugal contactors like in the bottom left where a blue fluid and a yellow fluid are introduced. They mix to become a green fluid that then is separated out. I'm talking about traditional separators like the one shown on the bottom right that have a stacked series of cone shaped baffles to help guide solid materials out. Centrifuges work well and have been in use for many years. So where are the problems today? One problem is processing invasive species in ballast water. Container ships come from overseas to ports like Long Beach, Houston, Chicago. And if they dump their ballast water upon arrival, they could be letting microscopic zebra mussels, for example, into waters. And an invasive species like zebra mussels will quickly grow and clog all sorts of grates and pipes and cause a real mess. And it's not very economical to pump this water off the ship onto shore for separating. Another problem are the oil sand settling ponds. Here, water is used for mining processes for petroleum. And afterwards, there's nothing that can be done with it except put it in large ponds to settle and wait until the contaminants settle out. But this allows for the release of volatile organic compounds into the atmosphere and possibly leaching of these contaminants into groundwater. Another problem is plastics in water in the environment. One plastic known as PFAS or PFAS is commonly found now in many water systems. Microbeads, as shown in the lower left, are a common component of consumer products, but they're hard to deal with once they've been released into the environment. Some states have outlawed their use already. Another problem is recovering rare elements that are co-products and byproducts of mining. For example, when mining copper, you get small amounts of other interesting elements 
in the wastewater used for mining. In fact, this is one primary source of these elements. Some of these elements are becoming so-called energy critical, where their use for batteries or solar panels or semiconductors is becoming increasingly important. But it's hard to separate them out effectively from the tailings of the mining process. Who were some of the major players in these spaces? spaces? In centrifuges, GEA Westfalia and Flotweg are major manufacturers in Europe. Centrisys and Alpha Laval are major companies in the US making centrifuges, all of them providing centrifuges to customers in a wide range of areas. Users include people like ExxonMobil and also companies like Freeport McMoran who do mining of copper in the United States. And our value proposition is that using 10 times better effective gravity will enable the separating of submicron sized particles and materials, which is really something that centrifuges today cannot do. And our competition includes filters and flocculants, and sometimes the laws of physics. Filters can effectively separate out submicron sized particles, but filters like the one shown on the left can become clogged frequently, and their use reduces the throughput of liquid through your system. Flocculants can be used to cause small submicron sized par particles to clump together and be more easily separated. All centrifuges would work better if you would just spin them faster, but there are limits to how fast you can spin this complicated machinery. In the center is a picture of a centrifuge that exploded. You might want to just spin part of the centrifuge faster, but if you spin parts at speeds that are too dissimilar, rather than getting effective separation, you get turbulence like shown in the picture on the right. Separation has a billion dollar markets. GEA Westfalia, for example, has about $6 billion in annual revenues. The General Accounting Office and Department of Defense have estimated that cleanup of PFAS will cost around $2 billion a year at the outset. Zebra mussel related maintenance costs US companies about $300 million a year. And who knows how big the market will be ultimately for energy critical elements. Our model going forward is to partner with a company or license the technology we have in order to create new centrifuge products or even retrofit existing designs. Our team includes myself, as well as Han Tao Ji and Philip Thimian at PPL. Former PPLers like Adam Cohen and Eric Edlund are also part of the team. Our technology enables high rotation rate and high effective gravity without turbulence. Here on the left is sort of a wind tunnel mock-up, if you will. It's our lab prototype. And instead of spinning everything at a fixed number of revolutions per minute, maybe like the blue curve on the right might suggest, we crank up the inner cylinder to be 10 times faster. Then the rotation profile is like what's shown in red on the right. In this case, you get high effective gravity near that inner cylinder, but yet no turbulence in this device because of our technology. What comes next? We want to secure funding to develop a full speed compact prototype that has high throughput. Why is this? We need to demonstrate the readiness of the technology to partners and licensees. Nobody buys a fleet of airplanes based on wind tunnel results. When? Now. Now is the time to take this for a spin. Thank you.